Hello again folks, um, sorry I've been a little bit quiet of late, um, we've been really busy at work, a little bit undermanned and in, in total honesty um, I've been coming from work a little bit tired and a little bit uh, lacking in the motivation area and I've simply not really had the time to do any videos so yeah, yeah I know, dry your eyes Chris, um, but no, that's basically the reason why I've, I've not been doing any videos recently so um you know, there will be more coming. Um, on the subject of more videos, um, I know a lot of you um, have been asking me to do more uh, electronic kit builds. Um, I did explain that I'd ordered a few kits from a seller on AliExpress. Um, the long and short of it is that package has gone missing. Uh, I contacted the seller. Uh, they were really helpful. Well, in essence, they just refunded me and apologised. Um, but I have subsequently uh, ordered a few kits from various places, AliExpress, Banggood, eBay, um, so that at least there should be a few coming in the next couple of weeks. So keep your eyes out uh, for those. Um, but I thought I'd do a video tonight, um, I thought I'd do a bit of a retro unboxing, not so much a retro unboxing, but certainly a bit of, sort of older technology. Um, for those of you that have watched uh, my channel for a wee while now, you'll know that I do have a bit of a penchant for um, vintage or retro type GPS units. And this Garmin Navtalk uh, dates back to it's early 2000s, 2003 I believe. Um, and what this is, is essentially um, a, a mobile phone and a handheld GPS receiver uh, welded together, in essence. Um, of course, most uh, most of us nowadays have, you know, a smart device which, you know, has GPS built in, and you just take it for granted. But back in the late 90s and early 2000s, um, you would generally require, uh, I mean, of course, this is, this is very early 90s, late 80s, um, but you would require a, a dedicated handheld GPS receiver. Uh, and of course, you might have a mobile phone, you know, your typical Nokia or Motorola, something like that type brick phone. But yeah, back in the back in the day, Garmin thought, right, we'll put two of them together and have an all-in device that, you know, somebody could use. Um, I won't take you through the, the whole box, I know that bores a lot of people, but we'll just take a quick look at the front. Yeah, dual band with uh, SMS messaging and a WAP browser. It's got a, a PDA function, um, full featured GPS shows you where you are on the map, as you can probably see from the, the image there. Automatic routing uh, with turn by turn directions and voice, and it tells you about all the software it comes with. So yeah, there's the rest of the box. If you want to pause and read it yourself, you can, I'm not going to read it all out. Um, but yeah, let's have a look inside. So I got this unit um, on eBay. It cost me just £10, including delivery. Um, but just be, before I started doing this video, I did have a look on eBay. Uh, and I'm pleased to report that if you're in the market for a early 2000s GPS-based mobile phone, there is one uh, exact same model currently on sale on eBay for £15, including delivery. Um, but yeah, we'll have a look at the bits and pieces and then take a look at your phone. So here's a power supply. It's a Garmin branded uh, power supply. It's of course the European style here. Um, 5 volts, 1 amp. Um, and it has this uh, proprietary Garmin connector on there. Just two contacts populated in the, the edge there, the edge of the connector. Of course, this is purely just a power lead. Um, it does have a, a modular type, um, you know, sort of telecommunication style connector so possibly you could get a, a uk type um you know power pack and plug this lead in or it might just be the way they've designed it <coughs> excuse me we also get uh, a serial connector a serial interface we have got a nine pin uh, d uh, d sub connector there for the serial connection and there's again the proprietary connector but this time fully populated um, and of course this is for connecting the device to a PC and um, there's potential of course as well that we could connect it to a piece of uh, navigation equipment and actually use the phone as a GPS receiver on to I suppose more boring stuff really for me totally honest We've got the software, uh, this is still sealed, as you can see. This is the City Select, which has got all the maps and stuff for the European cities. We've got our uh, map source uh, user guide. Yep, set up instructions. And that's just the serial number for the software. Um, Navtalk GSM set up CD requires a Pentium uh, 
a PC with a Pentium processor, 32 mega RAM, blah blah blah. Um, 640 by 480 display. God, do you remember that resolution? Uh, and 300 megabytes of hard disk space. And it needs an operating system, one uh, such as 95, Windows 98, NT, Millennium, 2000, XP. All the good retro versions of Windows. Uh, that's just the envelope for the software. And we do get a quick reference guide, uh, which is quite handy. This would be ideal if you're getting out in the hills or whatever, because it is uh, waterproof paper. It's not dissimilar to the new style £5 and £10 notes here in the UK, and of course the Euros, etc, etc. It's, uh, yeah, it's a plasticised paper that's going to be you know, waterproof or at least water resistant. Anyway, enough of the boring stuff, let's go on to the main event. Uh, here it is, the Garmin Nav Talk. So it's you know, a typical uh, late 90s, early 2000s brick phone. Uh, not not unlike the, the old Nokias and Motorola's you used to get. Um, we've got the Garmin brand and the little globe logo there as all their stuff comes with. Um, standard telephone keypad uh, with this, a D, uh, D-pad style, you know, mini joystick kind of thing in the middle there. Volume buttons on uh, the left hand side, uh, and that's pretty much all she wrote there. Uh, on the top, we've got this fixed stubby aerial. Yeah, some of them used to pull out, but this is one of the screw on ones. Um, we've got a headset connector on here, standard 2.5mm headset, like all, all phones of this era used to have. You know, you never had proprietary connectors or Bluetooth, it was always, you know, one of these plug in jobbies with a the single earpiece and the inline microphone. Uh, on the back here we've got a couple of rubber um, sort of bungs here, I'm not going to take them off. This one is a, a screw attachment for a belt clip and the top one here I believe is uh, for an external GPS antenna. Um, under the battery compartment, or I say battery compartment, it is a, uh, what do you call it? Uh, a proprietary battery so the, the battery itself is a, a cell uh, mounted onto a, if I flex this um, you will just possibly see in there like a bit of green PCB so they've just uh, rooted that out the main panel um, you know and basically stuck it onto the cell and they're using the uh, you know the the copper the gold plated copper on the PCB as the contacts and they just marry up with the, the contacts in the back of the phone here obviously they got our um, uh, information here, IMEI number. We can see it's uh, made in is that Kansas, USA? Oh, I don't know. I don't know my American states and all that sort of stuff. Uh, now I've talked GSM, and of course, uh, as with most phones of this era, a full size uh, SIM card. So we'll pop that back on, and we'll turn that on. So there we go. Yep, copyright two thousand three. Garmin Navtalk GSM. Okay, so um, yeah, it's just a standard type phone other than the GPS. So they, yeah, in terms of the actual um, uh, applications, if you want to call it that, we've got our phone, you know, contacts, call history, the usual stuff. Uh, we've got the GPS menu, we'll come back to that in a moment. PDA, so we've got calendar, tasks, notes, games, all that stuff. And of course, with settings. Um, so we'll go back initially and have a look at GPS. And we'll see if we're actually picking anything up. Oh, GPS is off. Let's see. We see. GPS. Let's turn it on. Normal. Okay, so it's a bit of information. See, it's going to run down the battery a lot faster. Um, you'll see at the top right now, we've got a little... Um, if we can get it to focus. A little icon. It looks a bit like a TIE fighter. Um with a line through it that basically means that it's not locked on to any satellites just now now i have previously tested this and um from a cold start it takes about three or four minutes to get um a full f uh, 4d fix um, i know i don't know if it's going to get any uh, any this evening because i am indoors in the workshop and this is predominantly for of course navigating outside so uh, we probably won't uh, get any satellites uh, acquire any satellites uh, because we're indoors uh, but let's like say outside you know two or three maybe four minutes and it does give a full 4d uh, lock and the um accuracy takes it down to around 10 meters which of course is pretty much usable for everybody um i suppose unless you're in a whiteout or something like that but of course yeah you know 10 meters is, is going to be fine 
got the navigator of course it's not got any satellites acquired so we're not going to get a map or anything like that but yeah we can um, upload the required maps via uh, the serial connection should we wish to do so we can uh, find cities etc we can start typing in so let's type in london see if it will come up There we go, London GBR. Um, and we could, uh, oops, of course, go to and uh, get your route preferences. And uh, that would uh, bring up the the details. As you can see, uh, sorry, the, the, the route details. As you can see, it is still trying to acquire satellites. So once it's acquired the satellites, then that will, that will pop up. Um, where did we go? Find and go. Let's see if we can cancel that out because I don't want that. Um, no, nah, it's still there. Um, yeah, I didn't want that popping up once it acquired the satellites. But yeah, that's pretty pretty much uh, the functionality of the GPS. So it does have voice navigation. I haven't actually listened to the voices. Um, it may be that they, they aren't actually uh, programmed in there. Let's see if there's any settings for that. Maybe GPS. No. Let's try system. No, it's just talking about interface and all that good stuff. Oh, we can change the. Um... Oh, yeah. So we can use this as a GPS uh, antenna for another system. So we could uh, just select NMEA data uh, and basically across that serial. Uh, connection we're going to get, get those um, NMEA sentences which we could use in another program uh, you know just extrapolate the, the position speed uh, altitude etc etc so yeah it's quite handy that we can actually do that I'll just put it back to Garmin just now though uh, I suppose the big question is what's the ringtones like of course um, that's what we always used to uh, check in the first uh, oh sorry it used to be the first thing we checked on every new phone we bought wasn't it Let's see. No fancy, uh, no fancy MP3 ringtones here. Not even polyphonic, I don't think. Yeah, all the classics are there. And James Bond. Well, I suppose it's a bit of a, a James Bondy phone, isn't it? Back in the day, it would have been. And Star Trek. So obviously the. Um, Obviously, the previous owner was a bit of a Trekkie or something. So you've had uh, Star Trek and Star Wars with a little TIE fighter there. Um, yeah, but that's pretty much um, pretty much all that's there. Um, oh, trip computer as well. All right, so this has travelled apparently 18,750 kilometres, uh, moving average speed... Um, 430.9 kilometers an hour so um, yeah I don't know if the previous owner uh, was a pilot or maybe owned a DeLorean I don't know but um, yeah that's uh, fairly fast so yeah presumably this would have you know potentially a pilot would have been using it based on that speed um, of course this uh, type of device predominantly aimed at this uh, traveling uh, you know company representative so he would be able to he or she i should say um, would be able to navigate with it you know find a position all that good stuff they could do their um you know make calls of course to you know seal deals and all that good stuff and of course um uh, have the pda and calendar functionality to, to you know program in meetings and uh, various other pieces of information that they require in the day-to-day -day business um whether it would be used by this uh, outdoorsy type, I'm not sure. I don't know what the IP rating of this phone is. I would imagine it's, you know, at best water resistant. Um, of course, if you're a serious outdoorsy type person and you go on hill walking or mountain climbing, and stuff like that, you would have a, probably a, a standalone dedicated GPS receiver. And again, if you're going, you know, 
further afield, um, you would probably have a satellite phone um, so that you could call somebody in the event of emergency when you didn't have uh, you know, a standard uh, um, you know, cellular type uh, uh, signal. And there we go, it's poor satellite reception, as I said, we're indoors here. So I'll just turn the GPS off now. Um, and there we go. So that, that's uh, pretty much it. That's a Garmin Nav Talk. Um, yeah, I'd never seen one of these before. I'd never heard of them. I'd, I found this completely by accident uh, on on eBay, like I said. But it's uh, at the price, I thought, well, it's a fairly unique piece of technology. Um, I thought it would be quite interesting to add to my GPS uh, collection. Um, so, yeah. Maybe maybe you are aware of it, maybe you weren't. Uh, by all means, comment down below and let me know if you had any experience of this device or, you know, whatever. I always appreciate your feedback, as I've said before. So that's pretty much it, boys and girls. Um, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, if you did, give me the thumbs up. If you didn't, give me the thumbs down. If you haven't already done so and you'd like to do so, click my fat head down here and subscribe. And until next time, as always, take care of yourselves and all the best.